if you guys have heard of the Improv Everywhere. It's a, like a, break, a prank group that's kind of based out of New York City. Basically, if you guys don't know, they are just kind of like a group of people that kind of get out and they do missions like throughout New York. And it's just kind of like impromptu stuff. And it all started with this guy named Charlie Todd. He was in New York and he is part of an improv class. One night he was out with some friends and his friend was like, hey, you look like Ben Folds from Ben Folds 5, like the band. So they just kind of went with that and he acted like he was Ben Folds the whole night. They were signing autographs, talking about what it was like to be famous and whatnot. They were really getting into it and they all loved it because they just loved the improv because that's kind of what they were there for. They were there in New York to become actors. And so that's essentially what improv everywhere became. And um, first there's just a couple of small missions that Charlie and a couple of his friends put on. They started out small and they just eventually grew into what we know now as Improv Everywhere. And after he, this is Charlie right here, and the mission started out small, and then it got to be about tens of thousands of people that were actually active, like, active in these groups since 2001 when it was first originally like, concocted. Um, everybody would just volunteer. There was no like outside advertisement. They wouldn't like promote it in papers or anything. It was really just if you knew somebody who knew them, then you could kind of get in on it and become an agent as to what they referred to as the people that participated in these. There were, they did over hundreds of missions and they vary from sizes and themes. And the, the missions were always different things. They were just random, funny, inspirational, and hopeful. Charlie Todd, the guy who started it, he was, he's been on ABC, NBC, CNN, Today Show. He's been featured in New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and a couple of different other publications. He just recently, in May, had, had done a TED Talk just down at Bloomington um, about the shared experience of obscurity. And basically, he just kind of talked about what improv everywhere is. Um, there was even thought for a TV show in 2007 with ABC, but the pilot that they worked on didn't get picked up to be aired on television. But Charlie said that that wasn't really a big issue for him or the other agents because Improv Everywhere wasn't to become famous. It was just to do things and to kind of spark the like acting spark in people. Some of my favorite missions are just really funny, and I often find myself just getting caught up in watching the videos. So if you haven't been to the website, it's just improveverywhere.com, and it's really an exciting, I don't know, I just love pay, paying attention to that kind of thing. And then I can't go over all of them, so I'll just talk about a couple of my favorite ones. Uh, and then I can tell you why I think that this is really an awesome idea. First, they had a, a number, their probably most famous one is No Pants. And it's a series of different improvs and missions that they do where they get a bunch of people to board a subway, like a specific train in New York, and they don't wear pants. And they act like they don't know each other and whatnot, and it's just, it's pretty silly, and I would be really weirded out, but then it's really funny if you think about it, if you just see a bunch of people that don't seem like they know each other, not wearing any pants. The New York City subway in the dead of winter without pants? Well, you have to wear Or at least you're not a member of improv everywhere, intrepid mob. Very pranksters who are staging pranks all across America. Why do they do it? Well, to make people smile, of course, even if it's the cost, at the cost of their dignity. The No Pants series, this is their last one. This is a picture of all the participants, and this was probably this last January, and so it's really gained a lot of ground since 2001. And then there are a couple of different other funny missions that I'm going to talk about. One of them came from a fan of Improv Everywhere, they just emailed an anonymous letter and they are just like, hey, you guys should dress up in blue polos and khaki pants and wander around to Best Buy. So that's what they did. They got about 80 agents and then they just walked around Best Buy and it only lasted about 20 minutes after everybody got in there because they started to get asked to leave and the police were called and everything because the management was actually concerned that there was a heist. Like in, the, like in the making. And so they were, the police were called, but nothing actually could be done because you aren't, it's not illegal to wear the same type of clothing that a business wears. And so they were all just asked to leave, and that was kind of it. But to me, I think this kind of thing is really awesome, and it brings joy into life, and 
I don't know, I think we should all be a little bit more like Charlie and some of the agents. And then another one is really adorable that they did. They did the best game ever, where a bunch of agents went and they learned a whole lot about this little league team and like the two little league teams they were playing, just a random little league game. And they got all sorts of people dressed up and they were fans and stuff. They even brought in commentators. That's Charlie Todd right there and then one of his friends, Jim Gray. They commentated it. They had all sorts of crazy, crazy fans and they even brought in the Goodyear blimp to this. And so these little kids got to have like the game of their lifetime. They had no idea that this was going on, that the parents had a clue. And like after the game ended, the kids signed autographs, they did press release, they did like conferences, <laughs> and some of these kids are never going to probably make even the minor leagues, and so this was such an experience for them, and it was just a little bit of effort that these agents put in to really make a big difference. <coughs> and then, that was a lot of prep time for that one, but then there was another one called the High Five Escalator, where basically six agents got together in a busy subway in New York, where every 